you have probably never heard of me, but that's okay. Uh, I am currently studying political science at the University of Toronto. I'm in my last year, and I also work part-time at NoPros on minimum wage. And so the question I always get asked is, why am I running? And I think the best way to describe it is I'm running because I'm sick of feeling impotent, watching the world burn in the era of apocalypse, waiting my turn. And you're going to say, wow, that's let me just give you a little bit of background about myself and tell you why I feel this way. So for the past five years I've been studying and when I started, I started looking very specifically at issues of ethnic conflict, uh, civil war, humanitarian intervention, the responsibility to protect, specifically in the Great Lakes region of Africa. And very soon I realized that this region was not only dealing with these issues. There were many more issues that this region was dealing with, and there were many other regions of the world that were dealing with all of these different issues. And very quickly I came to the realization that I think a lot of people here have come to realize that the world that we live in is, to put it lightly, um, in a lot of trouble. There is a lot that we have to do. Our world is broken. And so it is up to each and every one of us to do what we can do to help fix it because the only way we're going to fix such a large thing like the world and all the issues inside of it is if we all take part, if we all do one little bit and try to help. And so how can we bring this back to the city? How can we relate it back to Toronto? Because that's what I'm trying to do. And so I wanted to give you guys a little story about me four years ago, uh, 19 years old. Um, ready for my first municipal election, very excited, uh, and very quickly I realized that the candidates that I had the ability to choose between, uh, I didn't like either of them. And I realized that none of them, neither of them were talking about the issues I wanted them to talk about. And very quickly I, I lost that interest. Very quickly I, I decided that, you know, there's no candidate I really like. There's no, to what extent is my vote really going to make a difference, right? In the system we operate, what difference is it going to make if I vote? And the sad part of this story is that I didn't vote. And so, four years later, right, we're at the next municipal election, and I look at the candidates that we have in front of us, and I felt very similar. And I started thinking, you know, again, why is nobody talking about the issues that I care about? And so, I know you're probably wondering, what are these issues? And to start off, it would be the number of people who are waiting for social housing in our city. Almost 170,000 people waiting for housing because they can't afford it. The 25,000 children who are in childcare only because the city subsidizes their spots, and the, seven, the some 17,000 families that are waiting for subsidies so that they can get their children into a childcare. The one third of the children in our city who grow up in poverty. These are completely unacceptable facts, and it's very disappointing to see that no major candidate is talking at any deep level about these issues, and they're not providing any substantive solutions to them. And so very quickly I realized this is unacceptable. And so what can I do? What is the little bit that I can do to try to change that? And so I realized I have to be the change that I want to see as um, someone very famous once said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And so that is what uh, I want to say from that story. Not that every single one of you should run for mayor, even though that'd be interesting, but that each one of us has a role to play. The most important people here are not the candidates themselves, they're every single one of you. Every single person that has taken time out of their day to come listen to candidates and who can make a substantive difference in, in this world, it's not our representatives, it's us. That's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> and so I wanted to talk a little bit about dreams, because I think this is something that we don't talk about. The fact that death is not the greatest loss that we experience, but rather what we what dies inside of us as we continue to live. Our hopes, our ambitions, our dreams, and our courage to stand up for what we believe in. And those dreams are they underpin our future. The only way we can build a better future is by dreaming about a better future. And so there when we talk about, well, to what extent are your visions grounded in reality, I want to say that that 
that is exactly what we need. We need visions that move past that and people who will never stop dreaming. And so I wanted to say, never let anybody tell you what you can or cannot dream, what you can or cannot think, who you can or cannot be, and what is or is not possible. Because the only way we're going to change things is if we move past that. We are all extremely privileged to live in a world that, at least here, in a world of material abundance, a world of safety, and what are we? What type of people are we if we don't use that privilege to help people who do not enjoy that privilege? If we do not use that privilege to make a better world for those that we share this world with and for those that will inhabit it in the future, right? There is a world in which people value their houses above the homeless, their jobs above people who do not have jobs, their money and their material possessions over the lives of other human beings, and that is not a world I want to live in, and that is not a world that I want to raise children in, and I really hope you all feel the same way. And I wanted to close with a quote that has always stuck with me from one of my favorite um, musical artists. <clears throat> That is, it's time for us as a people to start making some changes. Let's change the way we eat, let's change the way we live, and let's change the way we treat each other. 